Residents and visitors alike enjoy Cache Valley's tranquil pastoral landscape. Deeply eroded mountains clad in maple and sagebrush encircle the basin which straddles the Utah-Idaho state line. The valley landscape appears ageless when considered from the perspective of a single human lifespan. But in fact, geological forces are incessantly moving, building and sculpting the evolving terrain. The valley and surrounding mountains are an example of a grander scale geologic pattern called basin and range topography. The north-south trending mountains and valleys of the basin and range region are the byproducts of tectonic plate movement. The large Pacific Plate has been moving northward relative to the North American Plate. Some of the resulting geologic stress affects the interior west. Here, the Earth's upper layer or crust is being pulled and cracked into huge blocks. These cracks are called faults. The resulting fault block mountain ranges rise at regular intervals between broad, elongated basins. Over time, these basins fill with sand and gravel, erosional debris from the adjacent ranges. This same geologic process is at work in Cache Valley. To the east, the Bear River Range rises steeply, up to one mile above the valley floor. Slippage along segments of the East Cache Fault continues to drop the valley relative to adjacent mountains. Large, sudden slips along faults create damaging earthquakes. These can and have occurred in Cache Valley. However, small, imperceptible tremors are more common here. Geologists believe a large earthquake on the nearby Wasatch Fault is more likely, but even this could cause plenty of damage in Cache Valley. Therefore, residents should always be prepared for an earthquake emergency. Large earthquakes can break the ground surface. These visible offsets are called fault scarps. East Cache fault scarps are not obvious to the untrained eye. However, we can see triangular facets along the foot of the range. These tilted surfaces represent new terrain uplifted along the fault plane. Water is another potent force, shaping the Cache Valley landscape. The largest tributary of the Great Salt Lake, the Bear River, meanders its way through the northern part of the valley, moving sediment downstream. Before joining with the Bear, nearby mountain rivers and streams cut steep canyons, revealing carbonates, sandstone, and shale layers. Rockhounds enjoy the spectacular burrow traces, horn coral, and other fossils, echoes of life from the shallow oceans of Cache Valley's distant past. Now fast forward to merely 18,000 years ago. Lake Bonneville, the giant precursor to the Great Salt Lake, created distinct level areas or benches that skirt the valley periphery. These are remnant shorelines from the ancient Pleistocene Lake, sometimes likened to giant bathtub rings. The highest lake level at about 5,100 feet above sea level is called the Bonneville Shoreline. The popular recreational trail by the same name was constructed just below this level. The other distinctive shoreline, formed at 4,800 feet above sea level, is the so-called Provo Level of Lake Bonneville. During the lower and somewhat younger Provo Lake period, the Logan River formed a delta as it flowed into Lake Bonneville. Today, Utah State University sits atop this ancient delta, an extension of the Provo level bench. Here and elsewhere in Utah, the dry climate limits dense vegetation cover, and thus the evidence for Cache Valley's geological past and present is easy to see. It's a great place to be a geologist. To learn more about geology in Cache Valley and beyond, visit the USU Department of Geology webpage or visit the department's museum, which highlights the geology of Utah and Cache Valley.